Welcome back, everybody. It is 11.17 p.m. May 19th, 2018. Uh, yeah, I guess you could say this is a bit of a late start, but that's okay. No work tomorrow. Uh, I was going to try to keep this uh, one topic, but as I'm about to try to hit record here, we've had two uh, near 5.0 earthquakes, one in Papua New Guinea, one in Tonga, and then even a little while ago before that, there was a 5.5 in Tonga. So... Uh, for those of you that follow the earthquake movement and pressures, uh, we do have a situation going on um, in basically the southwest Pacific, you can call it. So we had the Tonga earthquake right here. This was a 5.5, uh, pretty significant, 10 kilometers in depth. Then shortly after, we had a 4.9 right at the same exact spot. You can see those two different areas highlight. Um, not too far apart time-wise from each other and then just now we had a 5.0 in Papua New Guinea If you guys remember we had a major earthquake in Papua New Guinea a few weeks ago That was the talk of the town um, And now we jump across the Pacific Ocean to Hawaii and that is the current talk of town But we also have the continental US so we will get to Hawaii I do want to show you a few things today in Wilmington, North Carolina um, if you live there, you certainly know about this, but you got over five inches of rain in a single day. That is a um, broken record for the month of May. Um, that is uh, definitely a hard record to break, especially in the month of May where North Carolina gets a lot of rain. So today was over five inches of rain. Uh, for those of you that don't know what five inches of rain in, basically that would be close to six, seven feet of snow. Um, if you use that amount of water during a winter storm, just to give you an idea. Now I want you to focus on something here while we're looking at the Doppler radar as well. We got this pretty interesting moisture anomaly going on um, just in the west central area of the country before we get into Iowa and Missouri. But it's interesting because it kind of just sits there. It's not really moving with our jet stream motion. And then by the time we reach about 1820 UTC time, um, basically... 12 or so hours ago, we had these storms completely explode over Tennessee, Kentucky. We had a separate system that blew up over, that looks to be the backside of Missouri, so that would be Kansas, and then in Texas. Check out what happens in Texas in the last couple hours. We've had two massive storms, one covering most of the northern area of Texas, and then one that looked like it came right through uh, Mexico and then just erupted over central Texas. Now that's what we're dealing with currently. This is frame 200, so these storms are going on as we speak. So what I did was I pulled up our lightning chart to verify if these are strong thunderstorms or not, and sure enough, yes they are. You can see this glob here. This is actually individual dots. Like if you look in this area here, this is the live lightning. We've talked about this chart many times. For those of you that aren't aware, whenever you see these weird green lines, each one of these green boxes is a sensor uh, building around the country that picks up live lightning strikes. So you are looking at this live right now. These strikes are happening as we speak. We got a very big storm system over in North Texas. We got one in Central Texas, all moving west to east. And then we have a large river of water being pulled up all the way from the Caribbean, all the way up the east coast, which is why Wilmington, North Carolina, got that five inches of rain. There were other places that got a lot of rain as well, uh, but when you break records in the month of May, as far as rainfall goes, that is definitely something to talk about. So, um, also Florida, you are completely covered in Doppler with moisture. It is beginning to dissipate a little bit on the west side. Maybe some areas of the west coast of Florida, um, things are clearing up. You may even see the stars if you're still awake. Um, that may actually have to wait till tomorrow, though, unfortunately. Um, Let's see here. Now, as far as our tropical intensity index, this is the stuff um, I really want to talk about for those of you that are still with me. All right, so this is our favorable area right now. I want to show you something interesting. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this before. Chances are it will change only because these charts have been changing like crazy lately. We are looking at the FV3 GFS, the new uh, version of the GFS model. And um, all the models do show a tropical wave coming from the bottom here in the bottom part of the Caribbean moving up into the Gulf. But the FV3 shows something that um, not many of us can say we've seen before. So we're going to take a look at this right now. Um, as we move into the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, you're going to start seeing a low system pop up right around here by the Panhandle of Florida and also Louisiana. And that's obviously covering the southern parts of Mississippi and Alabama. Now watch what happens here. You see the low pressure form. There it is. And then it moves off the coast of Louisiana into the Gulf, uh, north to south. 
and then becomes, according to this model right now, a hurricane that drops to a pressure of about 964 was the lowest I saw there. So once again, you are not seeing or hallucinating here. You are seeing a storm, a low pressure moisture system forming over Louisiana, basically the Panhandle, Mississippi and Alabama, and then moving south into the Gulf and then becoming a hurricane. And then it moves into Texas right there. You could see um, obviously we know these charts change a lot. So I'm not telling you that this is going to be a hurricane that is going to come out of Louisiana and then go into Texas. I am showing you the data that we have available at this time um, because it is relevant. We are very close to hurricane season. By this time last year, we had already had a tropical storm and basically a hurricane uh, with the early start to the season. Now, I want to show you this on the smaller scale as well. This is the zoomed in version. Once again, I will switch to the FV3. I will show you the other ones as well so we can uh, show that at least we know this tropical wave is waiting to come to this area. So as again, we move into these dates here, you see right around the 24th and 25th is when that low pressure is really getting significant around the Louisiana area. So there will be rain and whatnot going on there at the time, but then this thing wants to spin up and literally move south into the Gulf and become an all-out hurricane. This is a absolute hurricane if this form stays the way it is there. That's a 965. I believe we did hit 964, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, we did, right there. And then it wants to take a shot right into Texas. So that alone right there is a very weird situation if that were to occur. Not something I have seen, um, at least lately, uh, I don't know, somebody may have to fact check me on this or I'll have to do it myself, um, seeing a storm actually form on the continental U.S. and then move south into the Gulf, become a hurricane, and then move back into the U.S. So, um, very odd from uh, my perspective. Really quick, we'll take a look at, actually let's move to the farther version here. We'll take a look at the European model for this situation. They are showing the tropical wave. They're not showing this becoming a hurricane that uh, dips out of Louisiana into Texas, but it is showing that tropical wave around the same time. There you see it, the low pressure there. This is the European version of it as of right now. We will also look at the normal GFS. That is showing the low pressure as well. Sorry about the loading frames there. I actually just hit play. And there's the low pressure right there moving up through Florida. So we got one GFS model showing us this thing moving over the western tip of Cuba in through Florida and then basically up the east coast and then a low pressure system coming after that that's a few days after the FV3 version um, and then we have last but not least we will look at the CMC model and see what they have to say the Canadian model back that up let's move forward we're at the 19th the 20th so that's tomorrow here's the 21st and we see that low pressure coming straight up and we also have um, a hurricane formation in the Pacific Ocean according to the Canadian model as well and that also matches our uh, tropical cyclone intensity chart it shows both of these parts of the ocean the Pacific Ocean here and the Gulf of Mexico both showing uh, red and yellow colors showing favorability for tropical cyclones so I just wanted to show you guys that I do not use only just one chart I do look at every one of these charts I do compare and contrast and then I kinda take the average in the middle and um, based off of the data from that, that is how I make my conclusions. Again, I don't make predictions. I don't tell you that a hurricane's coming. I show you the available data they give to us to look at so we can do this ourselves just like anyone else can. So, uh, pretty interesting situation flaring up in the Gulf. And then, of course, guys, we have our situation going on in Hawaii. Um, that has not stopped. It has not taken a break, and I don't see it stopping anytime soon. If anything, we are just going to get hit with more surprises because this is just something that we have not really dealt with or we're not used to dealing with. Um, volcanoes go off all over the world all the time, um, but when they hit close to home and it's in a place that's uh, more familiar to you, it becomes more real, it becomes more of a, uh, a situation you want to pay attention to, or at least you do naturally. Now, there was another eruption about 12 hours ago. This was about midnight last night, moving into today, Saturday. There was another decent-sized eruption in Kilauea, uh, about a 10,000 foot ash cloud, a little bit smaller than the one we had before, but don't let that fool you. Uh, look at this grouping of earthquakes here, guys. This is all around the, the exact area of the volcano, 
and a little bit of time has passed, but there were some earthquakes that popped up on the north western side of the island as well. So this is now beginning to spread um, out into the ocean. It's beginning to move a little more to the east um, part of the big island, and we are also starting to see a little bit of movement on the back end of the island, which would be the northwestern side, I guess you could say, the northern part of the big island as well. So. Um, you can bet that this is not going to be done for a significant amount of time. Um, when fissures open, that means there's a lot of moving magma underneath the ground. And until that magma has somewhere to go, and until all that pressure is relieved, um, we're going to be seeing um, this stuff happening nonstop. So, um, that's really all I have for you for right now. I mean, I could go on about Hawaii, but we, uh, I bet it's system overload as far as Hawaii goes right now. All we can do is hope for the best. Hope people are out of harm's way and just keep an eye on the situation as it unfolds. If you guys want to check out the volcanic explosion itself, it says this event is a steam-driven explosion that occurred around midnight, May 18th, going into the 19th local time. That would be local time for Hawaii. Uh, the plume extended about 10,000 feet above sea level and drifted southwest with noticeable ashfall reported from the downwind locations. If you guys remember, they were handing out the ash masks. Um, which can only do so much. Poison gas is poison gas unless you have a respirator. Um, uh, a little covered mask will do no good. So that's where we're at now, guys. Keep an eye on those storms in Texas. I will keep an eye on the Gulf and the Pacific. Uh, but you are seeing what I'm seeing here. We are watching a hurricane form over land and then moving into the Gulf, north to south, and then into Texas as of right now. Who knows what tomorrow will bring. Gotta love weather. All right, guys, have a great night, and I'll talk to you all in the morning. Bye-bye.